Today on Church and State, we have Brian Kluth with Bless Your Pastor. Hello, Christian Patriots, and welcome to Church and State, where we strive to plug you into the pew and plug you into politics. I'm your host, Caleb Collier. With me, as always, Pastor Gabe Longren. And if you are a pastor, please stay tuned with us. And if you love your pastor, please listen intently. And if you want to be a blessing and uh, basically just take all these instructions and learn, you are going to help grow the kingdom. And, Absolutely. And yeah. uh, we could use that right now. Amen the kingdom that. could be grown right yeah. now. All right, let's move on. Bless your pastor. This is an interesting idea, and, and we're very, very happy to have Bri- Pastor Brian here with us uh, because this is an idea that it really needs to take off. I know that it already has in a lot of ways, but I, I want churches all over the nation to get familiar with this idea because pastors are burning out, aren't they, Pastor Brian? Yeah, they really are. Uh, late, the latest stats from uh, George Barner Research is that uh, 43% of pastors have seriously considered leaving the ministry in the last year. That's up from 29%, which was the highest the previous year. So that you got roughly almost half of the pastors going, you know what, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. It's been a tough couple of years. Every decision they made was difficult. Every decision they made, regardless of which decision they made and which direction they went, somebody wasn't happy. And so they were doing the best they could to serve their congregation, and it got ugly, uh, and it's been tough. And so a lot of pastors and pastor spouses, I know of, a, and, and I'm from Denver area, and, and five church plants closed in Lakewood this summer, and four of them closed because the spouse said, I can't do this anymore. So it's time. We, we, we have some things to help you Love your pastor and church staff well. We want to talk about that, give you ideas, but give you resources because you can be part of the answer, part of the solution for how to turn this thing around. Yeah, Yeah. there's the assumption that everyone just assumes, oh, pastors are rich. (laughs) Can you can you can you help? Can can we debunk can we debunk that a little bit? That's what we call (laughs) fake news. That is definitely fake news. The other one though is they only work one day a week. So Oh yeah, they only work one day a week. I love that one. Yeah, yeah just, just one day chilling week. in their office, yeah. writing sermons yeah. and reading their Bible all day. I all day. So I had a friend of mine and and, and uh, she asked her eight year old son, What do you want to be when you grow up? And he said, thought about it and said, Well, I want to be a garbage man or a pastor. And she said, Well, that's a really a weird combination. He, <laughs> and why why did you choose those two? He said, Well, garbage men work Thursdays and pastors work Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, the truth is, the truth is, typical pastor, 50, 60 hours a week is common, sometimes 70 hours a week. Wow. Uh, you know, they got early morning meetings, they've mm-hmm. got daytime stuff, they got evening meetings, they got obviously weekend commitments. It's challenging. I was a pastor for 10 years, so kind of know that reality. Also, tend to, uh, spouses tend to add another 10 to 30 hours to a typical congregation, often without any kind of compensation or pay. So a typical pastor couple, they're putting in 80, 90, 100 hours right. a week, every week, uh, and can never talk about some of their challenges, especially financial and those kinds of things. And so the Bless Your Pastor really kind of equips people you know, to, to fulfill 1 Thessalonians 5.12. Most Christians don't know this verse, but it says, show your deep appreciation mm-hmm. for those who minister among you. So it's not just say it, yeah. but to really step up and show it. And that's what the movement is all about. I wrote a little thing called 50 ways to bless your pastor, not leave how to leave your lover, but 50 ways to bless your pastor. Uh, and, uh, and it empowers people to know how to, how to really love and care for their pastor. It's so staff. sad how isolated pastors really are. There's only a few people who really know what they're truly going through. And that is their spouse, mm-hmm. their children, and then who I would call their Jonathans. Yep. And it's funny <laughs> that my Jonathan, his name is Jonathan. Caleb mm. knows what I really live like. He knows the actual me. And he still calls me a pastor. Mm. You know, I know we give each other a hard time, but that means a lot. Yeah. There's only, and I'm telling you, congregations out there, they will let you in, but you just got to be faithful to keep being there, being a presence in their life. I think a lot of people think they can just step into a pastor's life. Well, you got to build a little bit of trust. No, yeah, it, it takes a while. It, <laughs> it takes some takes time. It takes a while. <laughs> It was yeah. the, that idea that pastors have to be perfect, oh, right? And, and that's that is so unfortunate that it is so prevalent throughout. Uh, I would say American culture, but I mean, I, honestly, it's probably a, a worldly issue here. Is that pastors have to be perfect? They can never let their hair down. This is something, Gabe. You brought it up. Um, you know, I know you. I know your struggles. 
you know, you're my accountability partner and I still love you. And I still know that you are a pastor regardless of whatever you're struggling with. Mm. Right. And, and I think pastors also need that friend that they can. I, I like that you put it as a Jonathan. Right? Yes. Every, everybody needs accountability. And I'm talking every human being. Okay. Just cause you're a pastor does not mean every human being you come up to, you say, Oh, bless you, my child. <laughs> bless you, my child. Okay. We all know pastors. You're not perfect. Okay. But you are living lives that are so exemplary that we absolutely commend you. And we recognize that we have to come alongside you. And like, I love that story, how Moses is literally scolded by his father-in-law says, <laughs> I love it. Jethro says, bro, you got to drop a few hats. You're doing, yeah, too, you're much. doing too much. You're yeah. doing too much. Come on. And, and so many pastors need to hear that. Mm -hmm. You can't be Jesus. You got to let Jesus be Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then he shines best through you when you let Peters rise up, when you let Andrews, Simon, okay, Matthew. You, if you're doing everything, there's no Matthew. There's no Simon. There's no, and, and people's names aren't changing from Simon to Peter. And, you, and I, I swear, the devil has us pastors messed up thinking that we have to fix everything. And you know what? You can't. You just can't. No, you can't. And, and, uh, and they, and they need love and support and affirmation. That's the thing I've known. I had a gal that came to me. One of the things in this 50 ways list is how to pray for a pastor. And I had this woman, she came to me one day and she said, pastor, I pray for you every day. Mm. And I, she said, but I need to know what to pray for. I, she said, I don't know what to pray for. I've been praying, bless the pastor, but Lord, I'm sure you have needs. So we came up with 16 things, how to pray for me. Pray for my family, pray for my parenting, pray for my marriage, pray for my study time, pray for my quiet times, pray for my recreation, pray for my physical health, pray for my friendships, pray for my finances, you know, but I knew that that woman prayed for me every single day. Wow. And I knew what she prayed for because, you know, every church has difficult people. I mean, that's just part of pastoring. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> but if you know that if the people that are for you are, if they articulate that and show that you can put up with the difficult oh, people yeah. because you know, you got like, I had this Pat Hardiman that prayed for me. I had another guy that prayed for me uh, when he died, he was 103. Mm. And, and, and the gal said uh, to me, she said, you're going to have to get six people to replace him to pray for you. Wow. Cause he could get on his knees. True story. He could get on his knees every day, but he couldn't get up. <laughs> So wow. we had to, we had to wait till he was done praying. And oftentimes it was two hours. Wow. And he said, oftentimes that was for you. Much of that was for you. And, uh, and he prayed for me and I knew that. So the difficult people that, that are out there, sure. Okay. That's just part of, part of life. But when you know, you have people that are tangibly making a difference in helping you and supporting you. Wow. What a difference it makes. And that's not, that's one of the things on the 50 ways list. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. So for our audience, I need you to go to blessyourpastor.org forward slash one, two, three. It's a fantastic list of, of so many different ways that you can bless your pastor. One of the ones that really stands out to me here, Gabe, is, is one that I actually do for you all the time. Uh, it, it says to offer your pastor haircuts and beauty treatments. I know I, I've given you multiple beauty treatments. You know, I'm, well, those I'm sending you to the spa. Those petties, man. It includes spouses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's <laughs> my toenails in the way that he looks, though. I mean, yeah. he's he's using this. That red was really amazing. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, this is a wonderful list of just so many different ways that you can pray for them, that you can show them fondness. Uh, that you can, you know, share things with them. Uh, some of the things that, you know, some pastors, they're struggling with their cars, right? They don't have a reliable car because they don't have the money to actually either get a, a reliable one, a new one. Um, and so if they're going on a vacation, loan them your car for a little bit, loan them your RV, maybe, uh, you know, timeshares, maybe, maybe offer that to them so that they can get away well, with their Do me a favor. Spouse. I want you to scan back and forth. I'm going to, I'm going to hit the ones to me that, that really bless me. Let's just go back and forth. Here's one. If you have a vacation home or a timeshare or a recreational vehicle, offer to let them use it. That, are you kidding me? That would huge bless a pastor. You yeah. see any in there that speak volumes to like Pastor Matt or his <laughs> wife, Victoria? Yeah. I mean, that the frequent flyer miles, right? That's yes. something that a lot of us, I travel a lot for my job. You know, this is something that we could easily pass that over to them because I know Pastor Matt is, is uh, traveling all over the United States. Yeah. Here's one. Lawn and garden keep, upkeep. Okay, just, just being able to keep up your own home. Every once in a while, 
my goodness, it would be so amazing to have somebody help. You know, we, we, a lot of times we have as pastors, our kids do a lot of stuff. And the reality is, is we're, we're not spending a lot of good quality time with our kids. Now I spend, like, I have a lot of good conversations while we do yard work, but every once in a while, if congregations, you could step up and help out in that area. That would be really freeing for a lot of pastors. Any, any others that like, what, do you, what, what, what are some of them that speak to you? Like, what are your, some of your favorites? Well, in here? well, these are all, these all happened to me. Wow. So that, that's why I wrote it. So I took a $70,000 pay cut to become a pastor when I was 45. And I was like, how are we going to do this? And my church loved me in all these ways. So we, we had, uh, we had dentists give us dental care. We had doctors would say, you call me whenever you need anything. I'll mm-hmm. take care of you. We had contractors come and say, what do you need done in your house? Mm-hmm. We had people say that we trusted, hey, can, uh, we, can we watch your kids for the night mm-hmm. uh, or for, you know, for the afternoon or a Saturday? Uh, my, my son and I had an opportunity to go to uh, South America. Uh, we had a, a man in our church gave us frequent fire miles when my wife had cancer for eight years, eight years of cancer. Uh, and she could no longer get in an airplane. Someone gave us her RV. Wow. Yeah. And right, right now we're, my wife and I are on a 75 day tour across America, uh, Western States. And, uh, and we gave my, pa- our SUV to my pastor. So we just said, pastor, you need a, it. you need a car. He goes, yeah, I'll take it. So he used our car last year. We did this for four and a half months this year. We're gone for two and a half months. My pastor has our car. Wow. That's There's amazing. one in here. I want to ask you about pastor Brian. Yeah. You, you, you put here seminary, seminary courses or sabbatical. I mostly want to just ask you about sabbatical. Um, some pastors, there's, there's one of my, my favorite churches, Gateway Church has a mandatory sabbatical where it's like a full month to two months off every like three years okay. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like w- how does a congregation at gunpoint force their pastor <laughs> to take a sabbatical? We got a lot of guns in this church. Yeah. yeah. You will go have fun for a month. Or, well, or what, it, what, it, what is too much? What is enough? What is not enough? What it, like, your, what is your thoughts on a sabbatical? Because a lot of people hear the word sabbatical. Oh, he's quitting the ministry. That's not what sabbatical is. No, it's, no. Yeah. it's a sabbatical survive. is not a reprimand. <laughs> no, it is God charging you, recharging you. It's all, it's all our words. It's relaxation. It's refreshment. It's rest. It's renewal. It's refocus. I've had six sabbaticals in my life. Wow. Every seventh year. That's, every, that's how precious they are. He remembers them. Yeah. yeah. Every seventh <laughs> year, they were all a little different. But one sabbatical, when I was a pastor, my church gave me three months. The first month, I slept. <laughs> I, 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 didn't do, I didn't do anything. I literally just slept. I was tired. Six years of church ministry, I was tired. So we literally, I slept. I just like I just turned off the alarm clock and just slept in and took naps in the afternoon. And I recharged for a month. And then my family, we did a 20, 20 state trip around the country. My kids are at the time, maybe 10, 12 or 14 in an RV called the Starship Enterprise. Got about four <laughs> miles of the gallon. <laughs> but uh, couldn't, anyway. you, couldn't do that this, this year. Yeah, no, no not this year. No, better, joke. Yeah. no but, joke. But so I, I had that and, and it renewed it and it renewed me and it gave me energy for the next seven. Every time I did one of those, it was the, it, it just recharged me. So I didn't walk out the door. Mm. and recharge me for the future. And, and, uh, and I've still, I'm still, I still doing that. So I just had one two years ago. I don't feel <clears> like <throat> we're getting into the weeds by having this question right now. I have a question for you. Mm. There's a lot of people who are hearing right now in their flesh, their flesh is going, well, I don't get a month off. I don't get a month to sleep. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to put this out there. I'm not saying to you who are not in the pastoral position, you don't work as hard, but I will say this. You are not attacked as fiercely in the demonic realm mm. as an individual who is leading a congregation. And I, I'm just going to throw this out there to you who are struggling with this idea. There is a absolute all out war for the souls, especially of the spouse mm. of the pastor. And I'm talking there is rage in the, in the heavenly realms against pastors, demonic. And I just want to ask those of you who or your flesh is saying, I don't get a month. Think about what is going on. If you were a fly on the wall of some of these homes where they are counseling late into the night, going to homes, doing funerals, finding out about sexual sin. And I'm not talking about just adults, kids. It, it is, it reminds me of sometimes like a coroner's office, the things that, you know, they have to see. Discover yep, and hear. 
So I just want to ask people to have a, a level of grace to be able to swallow that jagged pill that you may not be attacked spiritually on the same level as pastor doesn't mean you're not as valuable to God in the kingdom. Cause I know some people take advantage of it. Yes. There's pastors out there flying in jets right now. And there's pastors who have $60 million homes right now, but I'm asking one people, out of one out of a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Let's give some, let's give some reality to this. Uh, just talking about UK okay, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Normal. Okay. Every, you know, evenings, early mornings, weekends. So it's not a, it's not a 40, 50 hour a week job. It's just constant. So that's a reality income wise. Uh, six, you know, the majority of majority of pastors in America make 60,000, 50,000, $40,000 a year, 60%, no retirement at all, no retirement mm-hmm. benefits, no health care benefits. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes have to, you know, say so go out to lunch with someone, they're picking up the meal for someone. The church isn't reimbursing them. People have no idea of the weight that the typical pastor carries and they can't say anything. Even, even what we're talking about right now, the pastor can't go to his church and say, Hey guys, could you do this for me? Can you do the bus your pastor? Because here's, here's what's going to happen. It, it, we had, it's called the easy as one, two, three leaders and laity need to do this. A pastor mm-hmm. can't do this. He can't even request it. So you need to be the one, the ones listening and watching right now, bless your pastor.org slash one, two, three, or just bless your yeah. pastor.org. Get, get the material. Here's, here's what you do. You get the 50 ways list. You get that distributed to every family. Secondly, you take up an appreciation offering, whatever, whatever it is, you just take it, you gift it to the pastor and the church staff and just bless them. They're not getting paid a lot, but that little boost will make a difference. Uh, three, you honor them publicly. You do something to honor them, pray for them, publicly acknowledge them. And here's the cool thing. When you do those three things and your church does that, we will give your pastor a $200 gift card. Mm. We'll give your pastor a $200 gift card. And we will give your pastor a $350 scholarship to a marriage retreat. They can't afford to go to a marriage retreat. They need to go to a marriage retreat, but they can't even afford it. So we will gift, gift them the scholarship and any other pastor on their staff can also go on that scholar, can go to that retreat, but it's going to take you listener, the one viewing and listening right now, you've got to start the ball rolling. You've got to step up here, go to blessyourpastor.org. Check out this website. Those yeah. of you who are online with us right now, Sawyer, can you put this up just so everybody sees it? This is such an easy He's got literally links to the PDF mm-hmm. you can download. English and Spanish. Ex- explanation for the appreciation offering. Um, I know sometimes we think we have to be elaborate to explain this to a deacon board. It's all right here. Okay. Yep. And, the, and, the, and the world's most hard-nosed deacon can digest this. Yes. Easy as one, two, three. Pass out the flyer, 50 ways, take up the offering, honor them publicly, let us know. Uh, and we will then step up with the $200 gift card and the $350 scholarship. That's what this is all about. And, and, and the cool thing is the 50 ways list. Uh, there's one pastor said, Brian, when that list got distributed, he said, it was like, like wildfire. He said it was a generosity wildfire broke out in our congregation. And I'm me and my wife, my children, myself, we have never been so loved and so appreciated. And he said, it wasn't just like a day or a moment or a Sunday. It was all year long because these ideas are all year long ideas. Uh, you know, like everyone right now, everybody listening right now, let me give you, if you don't even want to go to the website, let me show you or tell you how you can absolutely bless your pastor. You're in a store somewhere. You look to the right or left. You see a gift card, a gift card, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, grocery store, restaurant, like Taco Bell, Star- I'm a big North 40 Starbucks, guy. North 40, whatever. Here's what I'm telling you. Just buy a gift card, any amount, right? Yep. Any amount and go home, put a little card, pastor, we love you. We're praying for you. We support you. Thought of you today and wanted you to have that. I will guarantee everyone you will, you, that pastor will feel loved and blessed. Yeah, just and put it in the offering plate. As it goes by, right? <laughs> there it is. There's a, there's an offering. There you for go. I, I can tell you this as well. I, I hope pastor Matt is not watching this episode right now, because if you call on fire, your home, if this is your church, we're doing this. This is what's happening. Yeah, this is happening. Gabe and I are going to launch on this thing. We're going to fill this stuff out. We're going to get Marla to, to print out these flyers. We're going to pass this out at the next church service. Amen, Gabe. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I also love this in here. Cause I'm thinking about Miss Victoria. Cause she's, she's this woman as we call her every once in a while tank girl. Cause she's just like fierce Ukrainian just strong 
It says, give spouses the freedom to be themselves and to find their own niche at church. You know, I just want to speak to that right there. Pastors' wives do not have to sit with their fingers like this at the front (laughs) row, looking fawningly at their husband. Oh, he's so amazing. Every word you say <laughs> just drips with wisdom. You're honey. describing your wife right now. Though. No, no. And I, and frankly, <laughs> we don't, we don't need Stepford wives. I wouldn't want my wife to be that. I don't want, I don't need that. I want a wife who at home, do you remember that scene in 300 where, where Leonidas is looking at this envoy who's an enemy to his kingdom? He looks over at his wife because he's about ready to shove this guy into a pit. And this is what he does. He looks over at his wife and you know what she does? She goes like this. Yeah, she's got his back. That's what a pastor wants. He wants a wife who's absolutely just right by his side. In churches, you got to let pastors' wives be who they are. Yeah. And, and they, their kids. Yeah, and they don't have to be perfect, as you just said, but they also shouldn't be ushered into ministries that they don't necessarily have the skills for right. or the passion for. You know, a lot of times, uh, and I'm sure you can attest to this, Pastor Brian, they're immediately put into the children's wing, right? Oh, yeah. Right, and, and some of them are like, no, this isn't really where I want to be right now. But uh, no, nope, you're the pastor's wife. That's what you got to do. You know, that happened to my wife. So, and we had a, a woman who was a pastor's wife for 60 years. And my wife and I, when my wife and I took this pastor in Colorado Springs, she came to my wife, Sandy, and said, honey, don't let anybody tell you what to do. You get comfortable in this congregation. You figure out your gifts, your abilities, and then you serve where you want to serve. Do not let anybody tell you what you have to do as a pastor's wife. That was a gift to my wife. Mm. That was a gift to my wife. My my wife had cancer for eight years, and uh, people would take her to her chemo treatments, and she went to heaven in 2010. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that happened was uh, people brought us all kinds of food, and uh, and and that was wonderful on one hand. But my kids were teenagers, so they like didn't eat, like want to eat all the food, and and we had like way too much food. So what do you do as a pastor when people say, "Well, pastor, how'd you like that food we brought you?" So I had to I had to come up with an answer, and I would say, "You know what? That food didn't last long at our house." <laughs> <laughs> and so I could say that in truth. But what was cool was we told people after a while, because her cancer was terminal in those eight years, mm. we said, you know, bringing food isn't really as much help. Just a gift card would help us. And we literally had a stack, wow. you know, three or four inches high. But what was cool about it was we'd pick up our kids from middle school, high school. We would be able to go to Taco Bell or go somewhere, have a meal together as a family and go home. And she didn't have to clean. She didn't have to mm. purchase stuff. And because she was tired a lot, it was such a blessing. But it was just, again, a gift card made such a difference. It made our family feel so loved. And the, again, these ideas we're talking about, folks, they're really easy, but you need encouragement. Uh, you know, the scripture says, Galatians 6, 6, that you're to share all good things with those who instruct you. So what are the good things in your life? What are your skills? What are your abilities? What are your possessions? What can you do to use those to bless your pastor and church staff? God wants you to do that. It's part of his call on your life. Absolutely. Well, well, Pastor Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, on behalf of Church and State, I'd just like to say thank you for doing this, for mm-hmm. taking this on, because not enough people are doing this, blessing their pastors. The website's blessyourpastor.org. Uh, Pastor Brian, last 30 seconds here. Give us a closing statement. Well, I just want everyone to know, watching and listening, you can make a real difference. What we're talking about is life changing and life giving, and it might even save your pastor's life, save him from quitting the ministry. Wow. I said at dinner last night, someone almost was quitting the ministry after 20 years. And he said, I'm so glad I came to the appreciation event we put on. So go to blessyourpastor.org, get the ball rolling, connect with your leaders, make it happen. You can do this. Absolutely. Well, thank you, sir, again for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Church and State is sponsored in part by On Fire Ministries and Understanding the Threat, Vanquishing Liberty's Enemies, and Restoring the Republic. And with that, Church and State is out. Get ready and God bless.